So let's do the next two activities at the same time because it, it'll work out. So write a function int sum that takes an integer n as a parameter and returns the sum of all the numbers between 1 and n. And let's assume inclusively here. And then we're going to try it on int sum 5. And then we want to modify it to do the trace table like we did before. OK. So let's switch on over to our script and interpreter, which we've already set up, and just start writing. def int sum. It's going to take n. And then, because we're going to have a loop, because we need to go from 1 to n, we'll have a counter. So count, and we'll start it at 1. A lot of times in computer science, we start counters at 0, but in this case, it'll make sense to start at 1, and you'll see why in just a moment. And we're also going to need a variable sum to keep track of the, the sum as we go. And so we'll have sum, and start it at 0. Makes sense. And now we need our loop, so while. And then while what? Well while count, so count, is less than or equal to n. Because we want count to start at 1, and then go to 2, then go to 3, all the way up to and including n. Okay? And then sum is just going to be whatever sum was before, so sum equals sum plus count. Because, so sum will start at 0, and then we're going to start our counter at 1, so 0 plus 1 is 1 then counter will eventually increment to 2, and then 1 plus 2 is 3, then count becomes 3, 3 plus the previous sum, which is 3, is 6, and then count will be 4, 4 plus the previous sum is 10, and so on. Now we just need to update our counter, so increment it, so count equals what count was before, plus 1. Because if we don't increment our counter, we're going to run into an infinite loop, and that's no good. And then once we're done, we just need to return sum. And that should do the trick. So let's run our script here. Okay, good. And let's call our function in sum with the parameter 5. So let's, let's see what it should be. So 1 plus 2 is 3, then 3 plus 3 is 6, and then 4 plus 6 is 10, and then 5 plus 10 is 15. So I'm betting it's 15. Okay, good, it is 15. That's good. So now let's add those print statements to, to keep track of what's going on inside the loop. So I'll just add a print inside the loop somewhere. So print, and let's print out count, and sum. Saved it, run the script, call the function, and let's have a look. Hmm. I don't really like the way that this table, like, like the information the table's showing here, because we're showing count go up to 6, and it's not really supposed to go up to 6. I mean, we can rationalize why it does, because we increase count to 6, then we go up to the top of the of the while loop, and then is 6 less than or equal to 5 in this case, because n was 5, and then no, it's not, so it stops. But it doesn't really make sense. So I'm actually going to move the print statement right above where we increment count. And I'm betting it's going to make a much nicer looking table for us. So let's rerun our script, rerun the function, and there we go. So 1 and 0 is 1, plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15. There. I like the way this looks a lot better. So just by just moving the print statement, it looks a lot nicer. There are probably a bunch of people in the class that wrote this function differently, and that's fine. There are a lot of ways to solve any of these problems. So I'm just going to rewrite this, and instead of starting at 1 and going up to n, I'm going to start at n and go down to 1. And it's, it's a very easy switch. So I'm just going to start count at n, and then have the while loop go from when count is greater than or equal to 1, and basically have the same thing, except this time instead of increasing count, so we don't want to count up, we want to count down. So instead of adding one, we want a minus one. Okay, and let's just reload that, hit run, cross our fingers, good.